everybody. Thanks for joining me back here today. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I know I've uh, been slacking off on my sound quality car audio build, but I'm back to it and uh, show you what kind of progress I've made. It isn't finished yet, so uh, still working on it. Uh, what kind of stopped me is I, I have this big issue with my subwoofer boxes. I, got, I had to get six of these things. I get the sub box, the whole sizes are the wrong size because the RE subs um, have, a, have a slightly larger cutout diameter than the box does. So I had to figure out how to shave off like two tenths of an inch. So like a tenth of an inch the entire way around. Trying to figure out how to do that. I'm looking for like a router bit or something where I can just shave it off because I don't think I'm going to be able to cut with a saw a tenth of an inch. I mean, it's the width of a saw blade I got to take off. Subs wouldn't seal right because of it, so I found a router bit that has a curve on it so I could round off that corner because it just really needs to be the top that, that fits in. So I rounded it off, and then all of a sudden I mount a driver, I think I'm all set, and I play it, and I hear all this distortion. Um, there's air leaking through the screw holes because the curve doesn't you know there's a gap in there and the air can come through the screw hole so I wasn't getting sealed up and I'm like now I think I just ruined a box and I'm gonna have to go through getting the boxes again um, and I was like oh I just forget it you know and I I stopped doing it but anyway I've come up with a solution that works uh, so I finally sanded I sanded out the hole I got this uh, flap sander sanded out the hole so I could get the diameter up uh, to where it needed to be. The driver can then flushly mount again and I used a, uh, instead of silicone, I got weather stripping from Sears, closed cell foam weather stripping, three quarter inch wide. It covers the whole entire width of the flange on the driver. I put it all the way around so the screw holes actually go through the weather stripping. Bolted it down, it's sealed totally tight. Uh, it sounds really good now. Uh, so. I don't get any noise. I got both of them mounted. I'm rolling again. Um, so I got my two re. Uh, these are the SE series or SEX now series. Uh, dual two ohm uh, subs. So um, I'm going to be running them individually at four ohm and then wiring them in series down to two ohm. Uh, I also chose my amplifier. Finally, uh, I've been through several different amps. Um, you know, it was getting it was getting a bit more complex than I wanted it to. I was going back and forth with uh, several different amp brands. Um, I had a Sundown. I had uh, some Soundstream reference amps. Um, I was looking at several different ones. Audison. Um, uh, who was that other one? There was another one that was really good. I, f I forget what it was. Like 160 per channel. Anyway. The amps were getting uh, getting large, and it was turning into like, well, I was going to need three amps because if I if I wanted to run an active front stage, that's one four-channel amp. Then I need an amp for the rears. Then I need an amp for the subs. So I'm looking at a three-amp setup. Uh, all the amps I'm finding are these huge, you know, these big, big, huge amps, the class A Bs. Um, and it was just it was turning into a, uh, a project that was beyond the scale of the initial project which is a budget sound quality project I was trying to see what kind of system I could put together for roughly the price of what the factory premium sound option cost or a little bit more so uh, the little bit more I sort of set myself was around two thousand dollars I was gonna see what I could do but anyway so I don't have those other amps anymore I went to, you know, I still want great sound quality for the money, and I want a, you know, more simple system, but that can still be tuned to competition quality. So this is the one I went with. This is Alpine's new PDX V9, uh, version 9, not version 9, what am I saying? <laughs> PDX V9. Uh, it's the newest of the PDX series amps. It's a five-channel amp. Uh, rated power is 100 watts by 4. Uh, four channels, then it has a subwoofer out channel as well for 500 watts uh, mono. Now included in in here was actually a birth sheet, um, which I left at home. I don't have I don't have it here with me, but 
unfortunately. But uh, pretty surprised that actual tested wattage was 137 by 4 and 581 for the subwoofer. So it's a juicy amp. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty good for my setup. Um, and I'll show it to you here. Pretty surprised when you open these things, they are not very big. It's dense. But there she is. That little thing is going to power, hopefully, uh, the. I'm going to run an active front stage off of it. Uh, a lot of suggestions on that. I think that's probably really the way to go. I didn't want to get that complex into the tuning of it with set and separate crossover values for the tweeter and the woofers and I gotta get a laptop and a microphone to set it up um, but I think that's gonna be the best option uh, that front stage is really important in SQ competition uh, rears you know a lot of guys don't even have them or you have them down so low that it doesn't matter so the four channels in here are gonna drive the front component set the helix components at least that's what I have at the moment <laughs> uh, the Obviously the subwoofer is going to drive the subs. Uh, I was a bit concerned that that would be enough, um, but since the, the damping factor is so high on these and um, it was actually tested at 581 watts, that it's probably going to be enough. Uh, I'm not going for SPL, so I don't need to get these things moving that much. I just need a good solid bottom end on it. So. Pretty neat little amp, we'll see how it works. I've already got it in my head that if it's not enough for the power, I'm gonna get another one of these. I'm gonna get another five channel, run one sub off one of the sub channels, one off the other from the other amp, uh, and then I basically have eight channels of amplification that I can split the front component sets and the rear speakers into you know, uh, one amp for the one side, the left channel, let's say one amp for the right channel. I can get greater, uh, you know, uh, separation too, uh, and then I can also uh, have two extra channels will be in there, and I could add a mid at some point into the front sound stage. So that's the plan. As of right now, though, just a one amp. I think this will probably impress me uh, more than uh, more than I think it will. So we'll see how it goes. But it's got really cool connections here. Um, they've got these neat little plugs that you actually connect your wiring to the plugs and then you just plug it into the amp. Same with your power. Uh, you've got your fuses, uh, front, rear channels. They're different crossover settings too. It's like they kind of plan on using it as an active front stage. So, um, you know, channels one and two are good for tweeters, uh, three and four are good for, uh, good for midwoofers. So, and then of course sub. There it is. I don't have the bass knob yet might pick that up too. One thing's for sure on these subs though, they are tight. Um, I've actually got more box volume than I needed. Um, you know, they call for I think 0.64. I think after displacement I've got 0 .8, uh, 0 0.86. So I was thinking that I'm just going to get extra low reinforcement, but um, definitely the spiders and suspension need to break in yet. So I've been breaking these in uh, on a giant JC1 mono block and uh, try to loosen them up a little bit but I'll show you what they uh, what they do see if the mic can actually pick this up I'm actually pretty impressed I don't know if you can hear me pretty impressed by the box I don't feel a lot of vibration coming through the box that damping spray did a pretty good job they're tight. Any rattles you can hear are coming from the ceiling, the dolly I've got sitting on, all over the room. That should be plenty of bass for the car. And even though it's a lot of sub, still got tons of room in the trunk. Which I'm pretty happy about. Got all that space there, even though the box is a bit too big. The SQL box from HN would have given me a couple more inches of depth there, but that's pretty good. A lot of room there. I got three feet of space. I'm not quite sure yet where I'm going to put the amp. Maybe up under the package tray, maybe under the one of the one of the seats. But 
it won't take up any space at all. It'll tuck right away. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.